In order to live a life of true fulfillment, you have to learn how to connect your mind, body, and your soul together. And we hear this all the time, right? Mind, body, soul connection. What does that mean? And what does that do? It, I'll tell you, it sets us free because when we can actually unite those three into a divine union, we have our soul connection, our free will connection, our body, our vessel connection, and we're able to lead a life of alignment and to get to choose exactly what we want. I'm here in uh, Spain right now in Barcelona. I'm staying with my second cousin uh, in this beautiful home. I wanted to record outside because it's so beautiful. Uh, the lighting is kind of harsh, but I'm just sun gazing <laughs> right now. Uh, I'm waiting to go purchase a van, hopefully. So we'll see by tomorrow. Everything should be good. I will give you an update on that. Um, but so the topic of today, mind, body, soul, and something so powerful came through for me when I was in my meditation this morning. And I was like, that's the message. That's the message that I meant to share online today. If you're new here, I've been sharing daily messages on this channel of everything that I've learned up until this point, everything that I'm being downloaded at, uh, with within my meditations, little bits and pieces of my uh, life and currently my solo travel of Europe. And so the mind, body, soul concept came through recently. I made a couple of videos, one specifically on what that means. I'll go over that and then I'll go over how we can actually experience the divine union and it's much more simple than you would think, but it just, it made so much sense. And that's the thing with this topic is when it makes sense, it makes sense. Like, it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, so we cannot experience this life here on earth without the three, okay? The mind, masculine, Okay, the mind is what chooses. The mind is what has the free will. The soul and the body do not have free will. They do not have the ability to choose. But the masculine as well, you know, is very influenced by the unconscious that we have here on earth, by these balancing forces, by these patterns of society, by this control that we experience. And so if we're just living in the mind, we are trapping our soul and potentially our body in this like prison cell. cell. So many of us on earth are trapped souls. We're trapped souls. We're living a life that is not designed for us. That is not in alignment with what our soul wants because we've been trapped. But part of being trapped here on earth is giving the opportunity to remember. And that's part of the evolution of what your soul came here to earth to do. And sometimes maybe it takes longer than we initially expected. Uh, my mom and I always talk about how like when you're on the other side and you're choosing, you're choosing what you want in this human experience, uh, you know, your parents, your life experiences, your soul contracts, they don't necessarily on the other side understand the relativity of what it's like here on earth. <laughs> and so whenever we're saying now, like I want ease and grace, it's we're now adding with human relativity because ease and grace could be so different to them. You know, I want to learn this lesson, but with ease and grace and human relativity and with your free will, you can say every time I say with ease and grace, I mean with human relativity because my mom, you know, she's um, going through all these upgrades on earth. She's a spiritual healer and she was first in an accident on her bike where she was knocked over and concussed and couldn't remember her name and couldn't remember uh, a lot. Like it was like this big whole thing, but then she healed a lot quicker and all her spiritual friends were getting the messages that this was part of the upgrade. All of us are going through the shift here on earth. Where we're moving into the new earth. And in order to be compatible with the new earth energy, we need to receive these upgrades so that we are compatible for the 5D. And so, my mom, her experience is going through this accident where she was knocked unconscious and supposedly given these upgrades, but also was more recently in a hit and run accident. I've shared that a couple of times on her bike and she broke her back. And so now she is healing from that. She's able to walk again, but it's like, why? <laughs> We're kind of joking. Like, why does this have to happen for these upgrades? Like, can it be with human relativity of ease and grace? Like, does it have to be so 
so intense. And so uh, mine is not to the same degree, but for the past three months here in Europe, it was like I was experiencing a lot of like isolation. And so she was going through this kind of like isolation where she's stuck in her bed, but still having a lot of people coming in, checking on her and everything. And then I'm in another country like, why was I guided here? Because really I'm just kind of trust falling. I sold all my stuff in California. I'm trust falling into this life here. Uh, you know, I got the feeling, sell everything, go. Uh, you're only meant to plan for the first three months and then kind of just see where the wind takes you. And I'm like, all right, you know what? I've lived a life of separation. I've lived a life of not feeling fulfilled and of knowing a lot of what needs to happen, but trying to live my old life while also trying to merge this new consciousness that I'm experiencing. And that's not possible. You have to let go of the old in order to make space for the new. And so if we're just living in our mind and we're just making decisions from our mind, we're going to be influenced by all that is around us, all that we're told and taught that we are meant to want and the life that we're meant to have. I, you know, I, I have so many friends who I deeply, deeply care about who are just it's like kind of hot and sunny in, in the sun, it's hot and sunny. It's kind of hot in the sun right now, uh, but it's really nice because I just came from the cold winter in Switzerland. Um, I have a lot of family and friends who are in jobs where they're just like, I guess this is life. You know, I guess I'm just gonna work this stupid job you know, not get paid enough to even pay my bills, go into financial debt. Like I don't even see the way out. I'm just going to buy lottery tickets and hope that one day I'm set free to live the life that I want. And that is just being on the hamster wheel. That is just operating from your mind and from the unconscious and from those patterns. And so when we look at the, the mind like that, and then we see that we are a divine union, union with the three, that in order to live the life that is most fulfilling to us, we have to choose the three. And so looking at the soul, the soul is the all knowing, the mind chooses, the soul knows. And the soul is who we are. We are a spiritual being having a human experience. The human experience is an integration of the soul, the mind and the body. And we'll get into the body but the soul knows what it wants. The soul chose on the other side. I want to remember who I am. I want to have this purpose on earth. I want to experience these things. I want to live in these places. I want to be with these people, you know? And so if we're just operating from our mind, because we're so taught that it's like, we're not even, we're not even taught to look to the soul. So often we're not taught to look to the soul. And so we have these intuitive feelings. We have these knowings. We know we want to go travel. We know we want to, you know, invest our time in this art that we're interested in. We know we want to, whatever it is, but we haven't trusted it. When you look at a man and a woman together, for example, or whatever gender, but masculine energy and a feminine energy together, you really would hope that the masculine would trust the intuition of the feminine and that the feminine could feel safe in the leadership of the masculine to choose, to protect, to lead, but with the guidance of the feminine because the feminine's ability to know is just as powerful as the masculine's ability to choose. So we have to use both and we have to have the masculine trusting the feminine. That is so important. Sorry if that's loud, we got a train station right here too. Um, and so that's, that's those two, right? We wanna start choosing from a place of alignment with our soul. And with the free will, you don't have to know exactly what that is. You don't have to say like, oh, I know exactly, like I wanna do this specific thing with my life. You can just say, I choose what my soul wants, or I choose this specific thing with my free will. And if, if it is in alignment with my soul. If it's not, I allow it to be even better than I could have ever could have ever imagined, right? Because if it's in alignment with your soul, it will be fulfilling. If it's not in alignment with your soul, if it's in alignment with what you were taught to think that you want based off of all these patterns and conditions and everything, then it's not going to be fulfilling. When you get there, you might work so hard. Maybe you're going to law school and you're trying so hard to be a law student because that's what your parents wanted of you or whatever. You thought that it would be safe. 
you thought it would be, you know, really lucrative and uh, give you the life that you want, but really you get there and you're like, this is not going to be fulfilling, right? Because it's the day to day. What are we doing on the day to day in our roles and the things that we choose? I talked about how I'm van shopping here in Europe and I was like looking at all these manual cars and I know it's not that big of a deal, but like this is a smaller scale example. I was like, I don't want to be on a day to day shifting and doing all these things. Like I just want to drive an automatic car. I know they're almost impossible to get here in Europe, but that's what I want on a day to day. The micro little things that I'm doing, I want to be enjoying them. I want them to be with ease. And so the things that we choose, we have to be thinking about ourselves in that life, in that timeline. Is that what we want to be doing? Will we be happy with the day-to-day of that life, of that timeline? And so then we're going to get onto the body. The body, right? We have our body. And it is the creation of the mind and the and the uh, soul together, right? The body does not operate on its own. The body doesn't go without the mind saying, go here, do this, go here, we choose this. The mind has to do that. And the soul can guide the mind, but the body is what is here embodying the two, giving the two life, giving the two life here on earth. And the body knows what's going on here on earth. The body feels the frequencies of earth. The body has ways to send messages too, to communicate like, hey, I have a back pain. I have a back pain. Can you please pay attention to it? And it's not like go to the, I mean, maybe go to, go to the doctor if you have to go to the doctor, but really look into it. What are the, the messages? What is the somatic meaning of it, right? We, if you haven't read the book, The Body Keeps the Score, it's a great one. So, but the mind and the soul are what can assist in that. And so together is how we have life. We have the vessel, our, our beautiful creation, our human body, our ability to experience earth, to experience our thoughts, to experience our intuition. And so we have to have all of them three together to be really fully embodied here on earth in alignment. And so then the thing that came through today in my meditation was when we're in mindful meditation, not like visualizing, trying to manifest, not communicating with the higher uh, team, divine teams and whatever, you know, just mindful. Here's kind of going crazy over here. Um, I kind of realized I've been washing my hair with a, a body wash because I don't speak any of these languages and I just also never have cell phone service in the store. So I can't translate. So <laughs> anyway, little side thing. Um, when we're in meditation, when we're in meditation, mindful meditation, we're aware of the body, we're aware of the thoughts, we're here maybe in our heart, but we're really just in awareness. That is the divine union of the three. That is when all of them are in awareness. All of them are ignited. I shared a video on this uh, experience that I had in a meditation, but something that we could all do is I started receiving the downloads that there are like stars almost. I don't know why stars, but a star in my heart, in my third eye area. And then also I started seeing one in the root chakra and it was like the soul and the heart, the mind, the root chakra would be the body, our connection to earth. And so in my meditations, I've been focusing on the three, mainly on the, on the one in the heart area and the soul, but also seeing the connection between the other two and seeing sometimes like an infinity flow of energy going through them and uniting them. And so when we're in that united awareness of the three of them, we are in alignment. That is experiencing alignment. You might not be doing anything or experiencing anything like here on earth. You might not be like instantly manifesting the, the whatever because you're just being present. But in that moment, when you're experiencing that presence within the, within the three, it is shifting your timeline. This is why meditation is so powerful is because when you spend time in that space, in that space of awareness, of alignment, of true alignment, you are literally changing the momentum in your life. And so what is momentum? We can have 
the positive or negative. I don't like to use the words positive and negative because everything has a purpose, but we have momentum going in our life, right? So if you wake up, you stub your toe, you stub your toe, you spill coffee on yourself, you uh, get a bad email saying whatever, and you're like, oh, just everything's going wrong today. It's one of those days, traffic, red lights, all the things, right? And so we are having momentum and we're building momentum by recognizing the momentum and also having the expectation. There's the expectation effect. There's a book on it. It's a, it's a really simple concept, but it's like what you expect you create. And so you start realizing these things, these, this momentum and you're by realizing it and then creating more expectations about it, you're creating more and more momentum that way. Abraham Hicks talks about how it's like pushing a car in neutral kind of off a hill. It's like we're, we're building the, that momentum. And then we have, and it can go the opposite way too. We can notice these good things, start feeling grateful. Even when things are kind of chaotic, the momentum's going the negative way. We can start changing the momentum by saying like, you know, this brings me joy. You know, there's a lot of chaos over here, but this brings me joy. I'm going to go do this whatever it is, maybe it's making some tea, maybe it's finishing a painting you started five years ago, whatever, whatever the joy is, moving your furniture like Abraham Hicks would do. But also a way to change the momentum is to come into alignment with the mindfulness. So that's why, you know, daily meditation really is so powerful because you are coming into alignment. You are changing the momentum. You are no longer focusing whether you realize it or not within your subconscious or conscious, you are no longer having expectations about how your reality is going to play out, right? We have these patterns within our, within our subconscious that are just vibrating and creating. Everything that's happening around us, everything going on in our life is a reflection of what's going on in our mind. And so when we allow our mind to come into alignment with our soul and our body, we are changing that from a place of the soul rather than from a place of conditioning. And so, yes, just sitting in mindful meditation for 15 minutes a day will change everything because it's like a muscle and you are strengthening it. And then you are going to be able to apply that frequency to the rest of your day. You're gonna experience, you know, the contrast or whatever it is, and you're gonna be able to see more of the truth within it and change the momentum. And so that's the other practice of it is allowing yourself to become aware when the chaos is happening when the conflict, the contrast, whatever it is, the undesired, when you realize that the momentum that is taking you away from the truth of who you are, from the path that your soul wants to live, you can see the truth in it and say, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay in my truth. I'm going to stay centered within my divine union of the three. And you can see that that is all not real that that is the unconscious operating that was once controlling you. And when you can recognize it as that and separate yourself from that and remember the truth of who you are, a spiritual being having a, a human experience with your mind, your soul, and your body, and you choose the timeline that is aligned with your soul, and you turn to that and you get on that track by following the joy. You follow the joy and that will literally get you to where you are meant to go you don't give energy to the things that are trying to keep you in the old timeline and you stay centered and you choose and you follow the joy, you can set yourself free. <laughs> you can set yourself free, but you have to stay here. Stay here in alignment with the three. Remember, the soul chooses, the mind knows, and the body experiences. And when you can have all of them come together as equals, you can create the life that you truly, truly want. And what you truly want is what your soul wants. So allow yourself to have that experience. So I hope that this message made sense. I hope that this topic, this, uh, this information about the mind, body, soul is starting to really resonate to the point of where it's like, oh, light bulbs. I hope that there were light bulbs. Like when it came to me in my meditation, I was like, oh, I get it. I sat in the, the energy of my mind. I was like, oh, 
I'm so sorry. Like you must have been so scared. You were trying to operate on your own. Like no wonder you were trying to go unconscious so often, be distracted, you know, do all these things like party and go on social media and engage with people in conversation that like really just did not light you up because you were just so separate. You didn't know that there was another option. You didn't know that you had this like GPS system of your soul that you can unite with to create this beautiful life, you know, within the embodiment of your, of your physical body. And so when I realized that, and then I realized my soul, I was like, I'm so sorry. You've been so trapped. You've been so trapped. You've been in a prison, like so many other souls. And I want to set you free. I want to set you free by giving you a voice, by giving you the choice, by uniting you with the divine masculine, the, the mind, and you are the divine feminine. And you get to create now a life that you wish with the sa safety and security of the masculine. And when that happened, and when I realized my body, my body's just been asking, please hear me, please hear me, like the child of the two. <laughs> I was like, wow, you've been so on your own because the other two have been so on their own. And so when you can bring them all together, there's safety, there's freedom, there's creation. You know, there's infinite possibilities within the quantum field. You can have whatever you want, create whatever you want, be whoever you actually want. Come into alignment with that. It's beautiful. <laughs> so please let me know what you experienced in this video in the comments below. If you feel called to do so, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. I will show you a little Arlo Gobarlo. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you in tomorrow's video a very exciting surprise should be happening tomorrow it's not really a surprise but uh if you know you know and i will see you tomorrow Mwah. bye